Welcome back to Old School Sports and our OOTP 23 playthrough of the Kansas City Royals. We are at the start of the 2030 season, and uh, this is kind of the last opportunity for this Royals team to hopefully compete. Um, it's going to be a very different team next year. You can see Spencer Bauer, Peyton Williams, uh, recent free agent signee Tim Anderson, uh, recent trade acquisition, Gordon Graceffo, Aaron Ashby, and R.J. Dabovich are all in the final year of their contracts, along with Mackenzie Gore. And Bobby Witt Jr. has a player option uh, for next year, and we have a team option on M.J. Melendez. So this is really the last go-round for this squad in all probability. Already have made a couple of um, big changes in the offseason. Uh, let our longtime ace Trevor Rogers go, and we traded away our longtime closer Austin Roberts. Uh, the only real significant addition we made to the pitching staff was the addition of Gordon Graceffo, who we got for Austin Roberts. So our pitching is likely to be worse than it has been, which is probably okay. We've had one of the top handful of pitching staffs in all of baseball for several years in a row now. So even if we take a little bit of a small step back from that, should still overall have a, a far above average pitching staff. Uh, Ricky Venasco is going to take over as our closer this year at the age of 31. has typically been primarily a starter for us over the course of his career, but we'll see how he does uh, replacing Austin Roberts. Do have some hope that our offense is going to be a little better, though, uh, even though our pitching is likely to be worse. As I mentioned, we did sign Tim Anderson to a one-year deal as a free agent to take over at shortstop for Nicky Lopez. Uh, he should certainly provide more offense than Lopez. And at this stage in their careers, um, Anderson is probably not quite as good defensively as Lopez, uh, but still is an acceptable defensive shortstop, and, and I don't think there's a huge gap between the two of them. And then the other kind of big addition is going to be the youngster Alex Vasquez, who came up at the end of last season um, when he was 22 years old, played 23 games, hit just 239 with an 89 OPS plus, but did smack 10 doubles in just 88 at bats. On uh, when you look at his batting ratings, certainly has the profile to be a very useful offensive player for us. Still ranked the number four prospect in all of baseball. So hopefully having Vasquez up for the full year and Anderson in the lineup will enable us to have a better offense uh, than we have had in recent seasons. And as I mentioned, in addition to potentially losing several pitchers um, next offseason, it's conceivable that uh, Bobby Witt Jr. will opt out of his contract. We may or may not want to exercise the option on MJ Melendez and then a longtime first baseman slash DH slash sometime outfielder Peyton Williams is also um, potentially going to be gone next year. So with um, Spencer Bauer kind of highlighting the potential losses on the pitching staff along with Graceffo, Ashby, and Dabovich. It's going to be a very different team next year, so we are absolutely in win-now mode. Uh, one minor concern, Shi Tong Kin, who has gotten his career off to a brilliant start with us over the first two seasons since we signed him as a free agent out of Taiwan, his uh, ratings really have taken a step back uh, this offseason. You can see uh, the last time we scouted him was at the end of um, end of January, and uh, his contact is down 20 points from where it was in the middle of last year. His power is down a little bit. His eye is worse, and you can see his overall ratings are also materially lower. Uh, we're gonna give him uh, another scout, uh, another scouting report from Travis Lee. Um, hopefully. He looks better than this because uh, we did sign him to a long-term contract. Um, you can see, going to be making you know twenty, twenty-four million dollars potentially by his uh, early thirties. Uh, still think he can be a good player for us. Uh, we've talked a lot in the past about his defensive versatility. Um, he's a really good defensive player at a couple of positions, first base and second base. He's competent at third and short. Um, 
but would um, feel a little better about the long contract that we signed him to if uh, his his contact and his power were uh, a little higher than they're looking right now. Hopefully, uh, it's just uh, a weird rating that we got from Travis Lee back in January, um, and you can see that the accuracy on that is only high rather than very high. So we kind of need a new report on him, anyways. But uh, given the fact that we're expecting both Kin and uh, Alex Vasquez to be kind of the two key offensive players. We're going to be building this next version of the Royals around, along with Luis Jose, who we will have for several years in center field, and uh, Sal Frelick, who's locked up. Um, it's going to be real important that uh, Shitong Kin is as good as we hoped he was when we signed him to that deal. And taking a look at some preseason predictions as the season begins today against Cleveland, uh, we are now projected to win, at least in this latest sim, the AL Central by two games over the White Sox. You may remember at the end of our last episode, at the end of spring training, uh, ran a simulation that said we were going to have 85 wins and tie for first with the White Sox. So feel a little better with this one projecting us to have the most wins in the American League. Obviously, anything can happen once the season gets going. Uh, but as I did mention earlier, um, the goal is to, to get back into the playoffs and win it all this year. You can see we took over the Royals in 2022. We have made the playoffs since, or we've made, we've hit a winning record in seven out of eight seasons, made the playoffs four straight years from 2025 to 2028. And we did win a World Series uh, back in 2027, uh, but we missed the playoffs for the first time in five years last year. So given that um, we're potentially going to be losing several big players in this coming offseason, the goal is to certainly make the playoffs this year. You can see we actually pared back our scouting and development budgets a tiny bit from where they were in 2029 to open up a little bit extra money. Uh, we do have some capacity to take on some contracts as we get closer to the trade deadline and see how the season is proceeding. But uh, it's time to uh, kick things off and get started and uh, hopefully get back into the playoffs with these Royals and hopefully make a long run in the playoffs once we get there. And we're off to a 2 and one start, and we did get our updated scouting report on Shi Tong Kin. If anything, he actually looks even worse. Um, his contact is just falling off the map. You can see he was a 75 back last June. Now we think he's a 50. His power is only a 50. His eyes a 45. We only view him as a two and a half star player at this point. So um, it's odd. Um, for a 24 year old to just kind of go in the tank like it looks like he has um hopefully it's something that can potentially turn around because right now his bat is definitely trending towards major league average after he had put up a 142 and 134 ops plus in each of his first two seasons and uh although we love his defensive versatility um feel a lot better about him if he's a uh, big-time offensive player rather than kind of an average-ish offensive player. And the Royals have kind of been win one, lose one here over the first uh, couple of weeks of the season. 12-10 and 10 record, although we are in first place, but uh, the youngster Alex Vasquez uh, just won. American League Player of the Week uh, hit 409 with four home runs and nine runs batted in last week. And you can see for the season hitting 324 with uh, five dingers and 15 uh, driven in. So uh, hopefully this uh, youngster, unlike Shi Tong Kin perhaps, is uh, going to be a uh, huge part of our offense for many years to come. And we've made it to May 1st. Alex Vasquez, uh, AL Rookie of the Month, with a 312 batting average, five homers, and 17 ribbies. Uh, the Royals are 16 and 12 in first place by a game and a half over the Tigers, up by four on the White Sox, six on the Twins, and seven and a half already on the Guardians. 
So a uh, solid start to the season for the Royals. You can see a uh, new shortstop, Tim Anderson, is absolutely raking, hitting 355. Uh, Peyton Williams possibly in his final season with us, um, nine homers and 23 runs driven in. And uh, Bobby Witt Jr. Um, hitting just 276 with four homers, but does have eight stolen bases. And even Luis Jose, uh, 976 OPS. Um, so, you know, good start for a lot of the players offensively. And uh, Gordon Graceffo and Spencer Bauer, both with ERAs around two, um, heading up our rotation. Uh, Spencer Bauer, I'm assuming, is still going to be looking for crazy money. He had $27 million a year for seven years. That's obviously going to be a, a very tricky contract for the Royals if, if we are interested in uh, potentially thinking about signing him. Uh, the 30-year-old Graceffo, we felt like um, we could get somewhat more out of him than maybe he had shown over the course of his career pitching in Kauffman Stadium with a good defense behind him. And uh, thus far, he has been really good, putting up a 202 ERA+. Plus. Interestingly, though, the FIP minus of uh, 106 is, is really not all that exceptional. He's looking for about $13 million a year right now. Um, He'll be 31 next season, so not necessarily willing to give him that at this point, but um, certainly a potential that we would have um, one of those guys back next year, probably most likely Graceffo, just because Spencer Bauer is going to be making so much money, but uh, there are still five months of the regular season before uh, we need to be making any decisions on either of those guys for the future. And the Shitong Kin situation is getting potentially really scary. Um, you can see his contact. We just did another scouting report on him here in May, and his contact is even lower. And he's batting just 138 this year with an 11 OPS plus. Um, our scout is really good, and it seems like this guy is just quickly deteriorating to a really not so good player um and you may remember from our previous episode that um kin is playing second base for us right now um because of the signing of tim anderson and some other moves that we made the guy who has been our starting second baseman for the last few years um Ricardo Cabrera is down in AAA, um, learning how to play shortstop a little bit better, but we could certainly bring him back up if we needed. He's hitting 328 down in AAA. I think that Kin's contract and his drop off the face of the earth probably makes him untradeable right now to at least get anything in terms of value, but um, I'm going to just shop him around quickly and just see what if any options there are um and you can see there are people who are still interested in him um i'm gonna have to give it some thought whether we just dump him right now um i know that's a really weird thing to be doing to a player who we thought we were going to be building around for years but the guy is just falling off the face of the earth in 11 months, his contact has fallen by 30 points, his power by 10, his eye has fallen by 15 points. He's gone from a five-star player to a two-and-a-half-star player. Every time we look at him, we're just thinking that he's worse. Um, and the OSA ratings for him are also trending downwards. Um... I don't know exactly what happened to the guy, but um, our scout is really good, and um, he thinks that the guy is just completely going into the tank. You know, just to show you, you know, Travis Lee, he's outstanding at scouting major leaguers and international players, excellent at scouting the minor leagues and amateurs, and he's just telling us that this guy is falling apart in this contract that we have him for is going to get really onerous in the not so distant future so i'm going to give a little thought to look in at maybe some of these offers and is there a, a decent player who's 
cost effective who we can get in return for kin right now and then we just you know potentially bring cabrera back up to be our second baseman um you know just months ago in game time kin was going to be a guy that we were building around for the long term i don't know that i i can remember seeing a 24 year old player in ootp who didn't have any injuries who just all of a sudden started going into the tank the way that it seems like Kin has. But um, I'm going to at least see what we can potentially get from him. And if there's some value out there by people who think he may be the player that he looked like he was going to be his first two years in the majors, maybe it's time to move on from him before that um, contract becomes a total anchor for the Royals and we just can't get rid of him for anything. And there are a couple of interesting young pitchers um, that we were offered for for Kin. Um, Easton Tunnis of the Rockies. Um, you know, looks like a four-pitch guy. Going to be 26 years old soon. Has spent uh, parts of each of the last couple years up in the majors with Colorado. Um, overall, his performance at the major league level has been slightly above average with a 103 ERA plus and an 83 fit minus. Um, you can see we think he's got four and a half star potential but we're low scouting accuracy on him and when you look at the OSA ratings he looks like a much more pedestrian kind of pitcher. Um, but he is someone if, if we get a scouting report a week from now and it comes back um, Somewhat similar to this, um, he's a player we would consider um, perhaps trading away Kin for. You can see he's making $3.3 million this year, expected to make about $6 million in arbitration next year, but with the potential that we're going to be losing both Spencer Bauer and Gordon Graceffo out of our starting rotation a year after losing Trevor Rogers out of the rotation, adding a uh, solid young starter may not be the worst thing in the world. Um, so we're going to wait and see what the scouting report comes back and looks like on him. And then another youngish starter, Jesus Bibbs uh, of the Mets in AAA this year. Uh, he has been up at the major league level a little bit, um, not quite as successful. Um, we have a better take on him. You can see his stuff and his movement are kind of average-ish. He does have good control and a, a marginal third pitch. So a lot less excited about him potentially as somebody to bring on board. But um, if the scouting report on Tumis comes back interesting, um, we may look to move Kin in a week or so. I guess my only fear is the way he seems to be falling off the map. Um, what's his value going to be look like a week from now? Hopefully uh, the Rockies will still potentially be willing to offer us Easton Tumis, who's on a rehab assignment right now down at Albuquerque. And probably not surprisingly, uh, Easton Tumis is um, not looking quite as good now that we know him a little bit better. Looks like he's a three-star potential um, pitcher. Uh, his control is worse than we anticipated, and even his stuff and movement not as good. Does have three solid pitches and potential for his fourth pitch a changeup to be decent. So he is a decentish starting prospect. Again, we're going to need help in the starting rotation at some point, but um, certainly you know less exciting to potentially deal for him than um, we had thought it would be. Um, Kin has been hitting a little better, I guess. Average up to a buck seventy-three. Um, you know, we're gonna pull another scouting report on him just to uh, kind of stay on top of this situation here. And uh, if it looks like he continues to deteriorate, maybe it's time to move on from him. But um, it's just interesting to see a player who was so good not so long ago and is still so young just kind of um, falling apart in front of our eyes. And we've now simmed ahead to June 1st. Um, still kind of a middling season from the Royals. Um, we're a game out of first now, 31-27 and 27 record behind Detroit. 
Um, have four games on the White Sox, who are third in the Central, and you can see right now we are tied for the second and third wild card spot with the Mariners, Rangers, and ourselves. So, um, you know, we're certainly in the playoff race. Um, good news is uh, Vasquez just won uh, AL Rookie of the Month for the second consecutive uh, month, and he also won the AL Batter of the Month award. So um, this is one youngster who is um, really living up to our expectations of him as the number four prospect in baseball, as well as just the, the way that he's raking, given... Um, those those batting ratings that made us think that he would hitting 303 on the season right now with 12 homers and 45 runs batted in in 201 at bats a glittering 161 OPS plus 159 WRC plus um, not much of a defensive player so his war is only 1.4 it's going to all really be driven by his offense um, he has been playing a little bit of first base for us but mostly a DH but um, certainly a bat that is uh, hopefully going to be a big part of our lineup for many years to come And we've now moved along another week and a half or so to June 12th, uh, half a game out, but the injuries are starting to add up a little bit. Um, Gordon Graceffo going to be out with an oblique strain for five to six weeks. Um, Tyler Bosma has a mild calf strain. MJ Melendez, very minor injury, knee soreness for a day, but Tim Anderson is a sprained knee. It's going to have a minimal impact on him, but it's going to impact him for three weeks with a moderate impact on his running. Um, having a fantastic year for us, hitting 332 with a 132 OPS plus, doing everything that we would have hoped um, for him with that one-year free agent contract that we signed him to, but may... Um, put him on the IL, just the 10-day IL, to see if we can get him to recover from that a little bit quicker and also not have a big impact on um, him for the long term. So we're going to be real conservative with him, put him on the IL. Obviously, Graceffo is going to go on the IL also. Uh, will give us an opportunity to bring... Um, Bring our buddy Ricardo Cabrera back. Um, we're certainly not going to force start him at shortstop at the major league level, but um, has been playing there in AAA for us, um, hitting 323 down in Omaha. So um, give him an opportunity to get a few major league at bats between him and Groshans, who we had picked up in the off season. Um, think that we'll be okay at shortstop for the next couple weeks. Um, a little lean on pitching right now, quite honestly. I've had some injuries down in AAA. Um, the pitching staff is really thin in AAA right now. Um, you can see we've got three um, guys in Omaha, including Bryce Hubbard, who we sent down not all that long ago, who are banged up there. Um, looks like Mike Soraka, the veteran, is, um, you know the most um, reasonable one for us to bring up has been brilliant for us with a 0 0.48 ERA down in Omaha. So um, we'll put him on the major league roster now. Um, he's actually going to be in a more important middle relief role than we I would have probably expected, but uh, that's fine. Um, probably not going to be up with us for the long term. Um, and shortstop is now going to be uh, Cabrera against both lefties and righties. Interesting. So he's going to uh, step right into the starting lineup as a shortstop for us. So uh, he still is a potentially big part of this team down the line, especially if we are eventually going to be moving on from potentially Bobby Witt Jr. And that'll be Bobby Witt Jr.'s choice um, since he's got the player option at $27 million for next year. And uh, Shitong Kin still struggling, hitting just 188 at this point. So um, if we end up trying to move on from him, you know, that's going to open up some potential playing time for Cabrera also. And then uh, Josh Young is in his last year with us. I think it's unlikely that we'll bring him back. So um, Cabrera is still going to be an important part of this team going forward. Um, so it'll be good to see what he can do at the major league level. Um 
over the next you know week or two while Tim Anderson is hopefully rapidly recovering from that injury. And the injuries for the Royals continue to come with Junior Marin, the young outfielder, out with a fractured rib for three weeks. Um, you can see he's been struggling this year, hitting just 229. Does have nine home runs and 236 at bats, but uh, 79 OPS plus has not been a, a particularly effective offensive player for us this year. So we are going to put Marin onto the IL also. Uh, that will give us an opportunity to bring up one of the outfielders. We did have Jason Dominguez up um, a little while back. Um, hit just 077, as you can see, in just 13 at-bats, um, given that we're down a corner outfielder. And right now, uh, Luis Jose is healthy. Um, probably going to look to maybe see what Jackson Chorio can do at the major league level. Um, he had a brief cup of coffee with the Royals in 2028, hit just a buck 82, but you can see he is hitting 317 down in Omaha. So we'll give uh, Chorio an opportunity to come up uh, for the next couple of weeks, hopefully get a little bit of uh, playing time. And uh, Fabricio Valera, who we picked up in... Uh, the trade of Zach Desenzo last offseason. Um, not living up to the massive um, all-star year he had with Milwaukee last season. And you look at his batting profile, and that seems like a bit um, a bit of a mirage. Um, hitting just 234 for us this year with four homers and 107 at-bats. But hopefully um, he'll get a little more playing time over the next couple of weeks also, and we'll get a uh, better sense of uh, exactly what he is at this point. And we've made it to the midway point of the season. Uh, just got our evaluation from team owner Isaiah Moore. Um pleased that it looks like we're potentially on pace to make it to the postseason, uh, making a little bit of progress on our goal to increase profit. Um, not happy with what we've done with the farm system. Um, overall, he's uh, says we may need to make some more changes to the head office, so uh, a bit unpredictable. He says he's satisfied with our progress, satisfied with our management, but if things don't pick up, we're going to have to make changes. But he's happy with our record, happy with our profitability, not pleased with the farm system, kind of looking at player development. Um, we rank 17th right now, so we are definitely a middle-of-the-pack farm system. But uh, you would think that um, probably get a little bit of credit, you would hope, for developing someone like Alex Vasquez, who, um, although his batting average is down to 287, still has put up a 149 OPS plus this year. Um, Royals have been playing pretty good ball as of late, um, opened up a five game lead in the AL Central with that 45 and 35 record. You can see we're the only team in the division that has a winning record and we are eight and two over our last, uh, 10 games, which has opened up exactly that five game lead over Detroit. So been playing well. Um, Tim Anderson, who's still on the IL right now is still leading the AL in batting. Bobby Witt Jr. tied for second in steals. Alex Vasquez third in OPS. Bobby Witt Jr. third in pitcher war. Uh, Spencer Bauer is second in the league in ERA. Tied for the league lead in strikeouts. And second among pitchers in pitcher war. And Ricky Venasco uh, leading the AL in saves with 24 as he tries to replace Austin Roberts, which is good. Uh, but you can see that he's put up a 5.35 ERA while generating those 24 saves and has a 1-6 record, which is obviously not optimal. Taking a look at our team statistics here at the midway point, um, you can see we are a slightly above average offensive team in general, you know, fifth or sixth in a lot of categories. Eighth in run scored, though, um... We are first in strikeouts, first in stolen bases, although we're not all that good in base running and we, we don't walk all that much. So the uh, eighth in run scored, um, the only good news is that as we have on many occasions in the past several years, um, we're first in the AL in runs allowed. So um, the pitching, despite the losses of Rogers and Roberts, has been really well with the um, 
best ERA, best starters ERA, and you can see we're first or third in, in many pitching pat categories, um, acceptable defensively, um, played really well in April, or decently well in April, really well in June so far, and we're average in May. That all adds up to the uh, winning record on top of the AL Central that we had talked about. Looking at the expanded standings, um, we actually have the third best run differential in the American League uh, behind just the Mariners and the Red Sox. So um, hopefully that means we'll um, play even better over the second half of the season. Going to obviously have some decisions to make with this roster. Um, not a ton of money for free agents right now with the moves that we've made just bringing people back and forth through the minors. Obviously, if we did decide to potentially move on from Shitong Kin, uh, that would open up a fair amount of money for us. Um, you can see he's hitting just 187 right now, um, and his profile has not gotten any better. Um, you know, our last scouting report with him was back at the end of May, so we'll pull another scouting report just to see if maybe we're missing something. And then also let's just see if we do want to think about potentially moving him, um, what the opportunity set looks like if we shop him around. Um, you can see there's definitely still a lot of options out there for him, although not quite as many as before, perhaps not surprisingly. Um, still some younger players, um, although he's also a pretty young player himself at the age of 24. Um, but if we do decide to do a salary dump with him, it looks that at least, um, you know, we'll potentially have some options. Uh, looking at the batting stats for the team, um, as I talked about earlier, Bobby Witt Jr., um, one of the top players in the American League in pitcher war at 3.3. Luis Jose, center fielder, having a really nice year, batting 288, 10 homers, 32 ribbies, and uh, he is a very good defensive outfielder, won a couple gold gloves before we traded for him from the Red Sox, and you can see he had that injury-plagued play debut year last season with the Royals. Uh, he already has more at-bats here in late June than he had in his entire first season with the Royals. So hopefully we can keep him healthy. Um, Tim Anderson, as we talked about on the IL now, but leading the AL in hitting. And then Alex Vasquez with that 287 batting average has put up a 1.7 war. Um, Sal Frelick, Peyton Williams, and MJ Melendez have all been above average players, but not having exceptional seasons. Uh, Shitong Kin really needs to turn things around. And then uh, Junior Marin, who's on the DL right now, or the IL right now, has had a rough year, as has uh, Josh Young. But turning to the pitching staff, uh, the pitching's been fantastic. Uh, Spencer Bauer still could be pitching his final months with the team, and uh, He's doing really well, uh, that 2.60 ERA that I talked about, 2.4 pitcher war already, 5-3 and three record, 116 strikeouts in 83 innings. So um, he's going to be turning 30 towards the end of this year. His demand has come down a little bit to a little over $26 million a year for seven seasons. Again, given that he'll be 30 soon and he's already fragile in terms of injury proneness, that's going to be a tough uh, contract for the Royals to potentially consider. Um, Tyler Bosma, 6-4 with a 3.22 ERA. Zach Jacobs, also 6-4, although his ERA of 4.63 is higher. Caleb Lagerwell, 6-5, 3.27. And Gordon Graceffo, um, out with that oblique strain now, 4-5 with a 3.21 ERA. He is at this point um, looking for about $15 million a year, so his demands just keep going up. So um, some of the relievers, uh, Will Goebel, 7-0, 3.24, R.J. Dabovich, 2.05 ERA, Will Bryan, 2.02, Jack Wiesenberger, 2.63 ERA. So um, some good performances out of the bullpen as usual, which have um, you know helped contribute to that league-leading uh, pitching staff that I mentioned a few minutes ago. So um, 
midway through this 2030 season, uh, the Royals are kind of performing as expected. We're first place in the AL Central. We're definitely a banged up team right now. As you can see, um, Graceffo, Wiesenberger, and then the Rule 5 acquisition Zimmerman all on the IL among pitchers, as well as Tim Anderson and Junior Marin on the IL among our position players. But uh, we've been hanging in there well. Um, you know, in our next episode, we'll get into the month of July, uh, figure out if there's anyone we can potentially trade for to bolster the roster, probably going to have to give some deep thought to what, if anything, we want to do with Shi Tong Kin and um, try to position this team to uh, hopefully get back into the playoffs this season and then make a big run because, uh, as we've talked about, at this point, um, Bobby Witt Jr. has the $27 million player option for next year when he's going to be 30 years old. So the... Um, guy who we've really built this team around over the the close to a decade that we have been GM of the team may not be with us next year. Um, having a solid year, hitting 292, 13 homers, 44 ribbies, 18 steals, as we talked about, and is uh, one of the top players in the American League in pitcher war, or batter war. Um, it's very conceivable that he's going to opt out if he, um, you know, plays the way that he's played over the first half of the season, over the second half of the season. And as I talked about, um, you know, Spencer Bauer could be gone next year too. So, uh, we are going to really be focused on trying to bolster this team over the next month before the trade deadline and put as competitive a roster together as we possibly can to, uh, make a run at hopefully getting a second World Series championship with these Royals here in 2030. But we will get into the nitty-gritty details around that in our next episode. Until then, thanks so much for watching, and hope you have a great day.